You know, I don't think I can do this today. Yeah, I'm pretty stressed out. I'm just not really qualified, not really. Um, and like, man, so many people, so many people are gonna like be like, oh, look at that guy, you know? He's just not really cut out for it. So I'm just gonna stay right here and just take it easy. Yeah, because really I'm just not good enough and I really can't compete with some of the other things that are going on around here. There's time to go home. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's too scary. It's a big world out there. A lot of big things out there and I'm just comfortable where I'm at. But you know what? I, I, uh, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's not happening. <laughs> that's not today. Not today. <laughs> I saw Dave Smith out there. He's he's a really cool guy, and and so I'm like I'm not gonna look like a fool to Dave, no sir. Plus I saw Nate out there, and Nate saw me fail my PR. So, yep, not doing that. Let me see. Hey, I have a question. It is not, by the way, one answer. It's not comfortable in there. But uh, I'm just curious. Has anyone in the room ever felt? Inferior, yeah? Yeah, good, me and one other guy, awesome, sweet. Let me get out of here. So, uh, all right. Yeah, um, have we ever felt inferior before in comparison to other people? Have we ever felt like unqualified? Have we ever felt out of place? I know I have. Something that I've noticed is it, it almost seems like most of us naturally tend to cut ourselves short and compare ourselves to uh, what other people may be doing, how other people may be living. And there are a lot of things today that play a part in that. You know, we might be looking from the outside in and saying, well, you know, they've traveled so much recently and I can't even like make my way anywhere else from here. Or maybe you might think to yourself, man, social media, the social media following and how many likes, man, I'm just trying to get like more likes and she has all these likes and everybody's all about what she does, but I post the same thing, but nobody cares and wants to like my post. Or maybe you have a, a vision or an idea of, man, that family, man, that family, they have it together. They know, I bet you they never argue. I bet you they're never late to church. It's so funny how we put ourselves in those situations. Or maybe if, if you're a fitness person, and you, you really, you, you think about those aesthetics and you're like, man, I'll never get to that place. I'll never be as lean as that person. I'll never be able to do this or to do that. That stuff is wild. It's real though. And it's impactful. But we, we, get, we all get caught up in it. Like even the people that you're like, man, they're killing it. Little do you know that they are feeling that same thing. They're feeling the same weight, the same pressure, the same expectations. And so there's this ongoing concept of inferiority. In fact, there's a psychological term known as the inferiority complex. And I actually have a, a there's a slide here. And so you can take a look at that, but I'll read through it. It's, uh, these are signs and symptoms. Poor eye contact, soft tone of voice, and passive communication. Signs linked to depression, like low motivation, low energy, and irritability. An inability to give self compliments. Downplays accomplishments and positive qualities. Let me, on that one, if someone gives you a compliment, receive it. Learn how to say, you know what, thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. Oh, feeling ashamed, guilty, or regretful of choices or actions. And here's one too. It's not just for the people who, who you can see that they're more kind of like to themselves or introverted, but some of us, this is important for some of us outgoing individuals, a fragile sense of self that is significantly harmed by criticism. It's so like, like don't let the words tear you down that way. Because when someone says something about you, when someone says something negative about you, so a lot of us have a tendency to be like, well, that's not true. Well, that's not me. Well, well, why would you say that? That is also a sign of inferiority complex. And then a need to be perfect and a desire for perfectionism. 
We are not perfect. We're not, like, we're not made to be the perfect people. We are imperfect. And that is actually what makes us human. And, and so, you know, I really can't help but think about this concept. And there really is a growing sensation, a growing feeling. And that's the feeling of less than or inadequacy in today's society is a real thing that causes us to cut ourselves off from the world around us. When we feel less than, when we feel inadequate, we hide in this box. We put ourselves in a box. See, we create these giant assumptions about who we are and put ourselves in this box of limitations where we occasionally peek out just to see all the things that stir up our insecurities and our fears and that make us think like if you're in this box and you're like man I'll never I'll never be at the level of that guy or I'll never measure up to her or hey maybe even I'll never measure up measure up to what my, my parents think. I'll never measure up to what my siblings think. It's, and we get stuck. We, 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 and, and by our own doing, we get stuck in this box. You know, this box that we find ourselves in is a dark place that we create to hide from the giants in our lives that we're reluctant to face. Why? Because it puts us outside of our comfort zone. I'm here to tell you this morning that you, you do not belong in this box. This box that we've created, first of all, there's not a lot of space in it, you know? And, and it, gets, it gets overbearing and it gets lonely and it gets dark and it really gets scary. So you're not supposed to be in this box. There are some giants out there that you've been avoiding some giants in your world that you've been hiding from and you've been staying in the box as long as you can. Some things, situation, and or even people that you need to face. And you need to know that hiding in the box, hiding in this box, it's no longer an option. It's no longer an option to hide in the box. It's time to walk among giants and conquer them. So we're going to talk about how we walk among giants and how we conquer those giants. Can we pray? Let's pray. God, right now, I just pray that your Holy Spirit fills the room. God, I pray that you just speak to someone today. God, I pray that you just lift them up, God. God, I pray that you prepare them, that you equip them, Lord, with whatever it is that you have in store. Give them the courage, give them the boldness, give them the action to just simply step outside of the box and to simply step forward into what they're called to do, to, to find freedom from their own, uh, their own places, Lord. God, I pray that you allow this word to just be divinely downloaded unto you, unto the people. So God, we pray this in your precious name. And everybody said, amen. 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 So what is something that we can do? How can we walk among these giants? Well, here's something very, uh, very helpful. All right, if you will. This, this, you don't have to walk alone. All right, you don't have to walk alone. There are some giants that we try to face by ourselves and that can be courageous, I want to say it also can be dangerous, but it can be courageous. But here it is. You don't have to do it alone. You don't have to. Ecclesiastes 4.12 says, a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Sound familiar, ladies? Adored 20, 23, better together. We had this amazing women's conference and it, it really does get better and better every year. And, and, and so, you know, the concept was better together and the whole idea of better together, it just says like you are better off with people. 
If you're going through something, if you're struggling through something, let someone know, invite them in so that you can conquer that. And you might think, like, there are some of us in the room that we just try to take it all on ourselves. We just try to take responsibility. We try to take ownership. We try to tackle it by ourselves. But you need to know that that's, like, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. I've got a picture here, uh, speaking of adored, that that we're going to show up there for a second. Check this out. Boom. Where are my wingmen at this morning? There you are. The fellows are a little more hesitant to be vocal, ladies, so we're going to so like, like, but they, they do great things, all right? So if you look at this picture, all right, this and there are other men that are not in the picture that were so involved and so a part of this, but if you look at this picture, these men as well as other incredible men, whether on worship team, tech team, or whatever the case may be, they came together to serve the women of this house, every one of them. Even Pastor Kevin, I don't know if you saw, but he was, he was back there on, on, I don't know which camera that is, Alan, but the one in the back. But uh, these men, they came together to serve the women of our community. And that is, can I tell you how well that would have gone if it was like just me and Pastor Kevin and, or, or me and, and Pastor Kevin and Nate or just like two or three of us? Can I tell you how that would have gone? <laughs> Not going there. <laughs> we'd be like, all right, ladies, you guys are just enjoying yourself, but come on with me. Can you help us do this? No, that's... You see, you see what I'm saying? Having people to do things together with, it just does something. It's, it, it's so healthy. And so having all the guys that we had made it, made it possible to be able to serve this house and serve the women of that conference so well. You can't, there are fights in your life that you can't do by yourself. You need to rally around people. You need to call someone for prayer. I love how we have these moments here during our worship where we give opportunity for people to come to prayer because we open up that chance for people to receive it. But listen, if you're ever sitting there on a Sunday morning and you know, I I need help, we're laying it out for you to receive that help, to receive a hand that's extending, saying, how can we be there for you? And don't feel bad if you're one of those people that tend to just stay, stay where you're standing because it's intimidating, right? Because we're comfortable in the box. It's easy to stay in our box. But you need to break free from it because whatever it is you're going through, you need someone to stand back to back with you so that you can press through and defeat that giant. We're truly better together. So allow someone to help you face whatever giant you're you're up against. Next is this. You need to constantly seek ways to stir your faith. Everybody say, stir my faith. faith. Do this too, stir my faith. faith. Anybody feel Italian when you do this? (laughs) Yeah, I just, you know, beautiful. You, You practice some Italian this morning as well. But yeah, we we need to constantly seek ways to stir our faith. So stirring our faith, like this is is good. Listen to this. Listen to this. Stirring our faith sets off a supernatural trigger of affirmation in our spirit. Joy and peace fill the atmosphere when the spirit of God is on the move. So when our faith is stirred up, it naturally causes our spirits to be uplifted. Are you following me? When you stir your faith... Something happens inside of you. The Holy Spirit moves and the energy changes. The vibe of the atmosphere shifts. But how do we do that? How do we, how do we get to that point of stirring the faith? There's a couple different ways you can do that. I mean, there's a whole bunch of ways you can do it, but a few are you spend time with God. Easy enough, right? Well, it's easy to say, right? But you spend time with God. Set that time aside. Here's another one. Reflect on the goodness in your life. Re- reflect on the things that God's done for you. You know, I, I, like, I, I commend my mom a lot because my mom, something that she's always doing, and like, even for me, sometimes I'm like, all right, mom, relax, you know? And I mean, we've ever been there, you're like, all right, mom, I get it. But, but something that she does that's really encouraging is she's always showing gratitude. 
She's always like, whether she's in whatever situation she's in, she's always very much like, God, you know, I, this, thank you for this. Thank you for that. Even like, that's how she will tend to respond to some of the difficult things that she goes through in life. She just goes back to just, God, thanks for this. Thanks for that. And so I just want you to know, even if you're like still heated, even if you're still in the moment and still live it over a situation, just say, God, thank you for my kids. You know? And then you might rethink that a little. No, you're, no. You just thank you, God, for what you're doing. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the constant reminders in my life that, that have placed me where I'm at. Let's never, never, never not be grateful for what God's doing. But when you practice that, it actually does stir your faith. Oh, yes. And this is a really fun one. This one's awesome. I love it. And this is one that we'll, 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 we, we emphasize to the students here at Radio Youth all the time, but it's this. Invite someone to church. You know, if you invite someone to church, you are, you are a part, you're playing a part to leading them to Jesus. You ever think about that? Your invitation plays a part in leading someone to Christ. You know, and so I want to encourage people in the room. When's the last time you invited someone to church? Really? Well, you might be like, well, I never, I'm always around the same people. I'm always doing the same things. Listen, man, you got to go get groceries sometimes. You go to the gym sometimes. You go do things. I encourage you, take an opportunity. Next time you have an inkling, like invite somebody to church. And then you know what? If, if they just nod their head, <laughs> that's nice. You know, it's fine. You, you tried. I've had that happen to me. I had a guy that I invited to church at the gym one time and I was like, bro, you should come to, come to church sometime. Like, and I didn't like go hot fire in it right away. You know, I worked it in there, you know? I worked it in there. I would see him a couple times. Hey, what's up, man? What's up, you know? Oh, hey man, need a spot? Yeah, bro, I got you. Hey, by the way, dude, you go to church? And uh, he, hadn't come, he hasn't come to church, but, but I'm gonna still ask. I'm gonna still stir my faith and send the, extend the invitation because guess what? That guy's salvation may be on the line. And if I stop inviting, then I, I'm, I feel like I'm not helping anyone. So I just want to encourage you, moms, dads, grandmothers, grandfathers, aunts, uncles, all of it, invite someone to church this week. Invite someone, like force us to have to like freak out on Sunday morning and say, oh my gosh, we need more room. Like I challenge you, like put us in that position but I'm telling you, stirring your faith not only helps you confront your giants, but its contagious essence gives other people motivation to face theirs. So if you're stirring your faith when facing your giants, someone's going to catch wind of that and they're going to have a little more motivation and confidence to face theirs. And then there's this, and then there's this. Believe in yourself. It's, it's like, sounds really easy. It's, it's, it's a simple, and I, and I was looking at this and I was like, well, God, like it is, it's gotta be simple. When we're facing our giants, if you don't believe in yourself, you've already lost. If you don't believe in your ability, if you don't believe in, 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 in your, your skill set, if you don't believe in yourself, you've already lost the fight. What's the point of fighting if you don't believe in yourself? Proverbs 23, seven says this, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. What do you think of yourself in your heart? Do you think, well, this is my home. Do you think, well, I just feel safe in here. I feel comfortable in here. This is where I belong. Because honestly, I'm just too afraid of, of, of failing again. I'm too afraid of, of sticking up for myself. I'm too afraid of, of my own insecurities. I care so much about what others think of me that I can't even think highly of myself because I assume that others already think less of me as it is. You have to believe in yourself. You have to have confidence in yourself. 
I promise you, if you start to tell yourself, if you start to tell yourself that you're capable, if you start to tell yourself that you're worthy, if you start to tell yourself that you are completely able to not only walk among the giants, but to conquer them along your way, you'll be able to do it. You'll be able to do it. And guess what? Take this into thought. When you are able to rise up out of that box, when you're able to get out of the box and walk among the giants and not only walk among them, but conquer them along the way, I believe that you yourself become a giant as well. You yourself, you become that giant. I think about incredible giants in my life that have done so much good. You know, about Pastor Kevin and Pastor Beth. I think about my mom and my dad, Papa and, and Mom. I think about guys like Jane Neer, guys like Ivan Lehman, Alan Hurley. I think about guys like my wrestling coach back in high school, Coach Whittington. He, he was saved. He is definitely saved, but he was wild. Coach Whittington, I don't know, some heads of alumni might be like, oh, I know, Bubby. Yeah. But he's a giant, literally and metaphorically. And so I feel like there's these, these false giants in our lives. There's these, these giants that are called insecurity and... and Depression and anxiety and pain and loss and anger and manipulation that try to manipulate you and make you feel less than. When in reality, you're supposed to be walking among the giants that God has, has given you inspiration to follow and, and, and to replicate and to try to emulate. To walk with them, to walk alongside of them. The team can start to come up. But in order to walk among those giants, the spiritual generals in your world of positive influence and love and strength, you need to conquer the giants that the enemy is sending after you. Do you hear me this morning? Are you following me this morning? You need to take a look, take a deep look within yourself and say, am I qualified to walk among the giants? that you've placed in my life that are heroes, that are, that, 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 that are people that I look up to and that inspire me? No, or are you gonna be crushed by the giants that the enemy sends after you? Can we all stand? Proverbs 23, seven. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So is he. Mm. I look around the room and I see a lot of conquerors. I look around the room and I see a lot of people that are pursuing dreams. I see a lot of people that are chasing something. I see a lot of people that refuse to stay in the box. For some reason, Carly, you're coming to my mind. You pursuing this, the, the fitness journey that you're on and, and, and the competition. You got a competition coming up. And that's something that that takes a lot of guts to just take a shot and do, you know? And it's something that you you and Dave both walk through together. Because a lot of times, uh, marital spouses, when you're walking through something, you better believe your spouse is is in there with you. So I think about you guys, you're conquering that giant. You're chasing a dream, you're pursuing something. We got Jordan Canby, he's, he's pursuing baseball. He's pursuing college baseball and that's a giant, that's scary. It'd be easy to say, I'm just not gonna do that right now because I just don't feel qualified. No, he's gonna pick up his bat, he's gonna go on the field and he's gonna work and he's going to exercise and he's going to prepare himself for the calling that, God, that he feels God put on his heart. What giant are you facing? What are, you, what are you afraid of right now? And it could be something like that, but it could also be something uh, like you're battling infertility. You, 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 you are just believing for that little one 
And Emily and I, you know, you guys know like the story. We've walked in that and we've fought that. And those, there have been some, like that was a giant in our way that we're like, God, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to face this. This is, this is way too big. I'm stressed out. I don't know what to do at this point. But God called us to be conquerors of the giants. I'm like, hold up, hold up. No, 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 no. I am the giant here. I am the one who am gonna, I'm gonna stand strong, stand in Christ and believe for my miracle. We need people in the room to believe for that because I can tell you right now, we're like, look, uh, the baby's the size of a coconut. <laughs> baby's the size of a coconut. Well, like, like in, what's it, Emmy? It's like 31, eight, eight weeks and five days. Yes, eight weeks and five days. No, who's counting? But think about it. Whatever that giant is, like, I don't want to put the, like, I'm not trying to put you in a box as to what your giant's supposed to look like. That's like, you know what the giant looks like. So what are you going through? What are you fighting? What giant are you facing that you need to overcome that giant and take your rightful place as the one in charge of your own life? Stop hiding. Like, get rid of the box. Stop hiding and face that giant. So right now, I, I, I just want you to think about that. I want you to think about the fact that you are qualified and called to walk among giants. You don't have to walk alone. Seek ways to stir your faith and just believe in yourself. So what giant do you need to conquer? What giant do you need to conquer? And right now, I just want, I want to have just a moment of worship and we're gonna close with prayer. But I want you to speak against that giant. So can we all lift our hands right now? Lift your hands right now and just worship just for a moment. Just for a moment. Think of that giant that you're conquering and just believe in Jesus' name that you will conquer that giant. Come on.